Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I want to show you how to repair here a digital multimeter UDS-5 from Rode and Schwarz. So if I power on the multimeter then the following message appears fault and what to do now. So the first thing is that I checked if there are some service manuals for this multimeter and I want to switch now to this service manual. In the internet you can find the service manuals of this UDS-5 and the interesting thing is here now on page 2.6 there are some uh, properties if you switch on here the multimeter and so on but here the last sentence is very important if the RAM is defect then the display shows fault. So what to do now? We have, or I have to change now the RAM. First thing is I have to find the RAM and then let's see how that works. First of all I have to open here the cover by loosening the four screws. There are four screws here for this upper cover. Okay, now you can see here the multimeter, the main board, and I want to go in detail a little bit. Here you can see now the digital part of this multimeter, the printed circuit board for all the digital stuff. Um, I want to go through a little bit what's uh, on, on this board here, and you can see on the lower left side we have the 8085 microprocessor. From the date code we can see it's from the 80s, 84, so it's a very old multimeter. Then we have here on the left side the 8279, it's a display and keyboard controller. We have here the EEPROM with the software on it. And here on the right side we have a 8291, it's a GPIB controller, so we have here on the right side this interface to control the multimeter from another uh, device, from a PC for example. Then we have here in the middle this one, this is a EEPROM DE52B13 which contains some data and stored for the next session and uh, so if you power on and off and then you have here some, some information stored and now here we have the RAM, it's MB 8417 and um, the problem is now how to get this RAM so I compare this RAM with a well-known RAM 6116 and it has the same pin um, yeah, pinning uh, of, uh, of the device um, but I, can, we cannot, I cannot get the 6116 here in this package I have to buy an SMD part so I take an SMD part I put a socket here on and with a with an adapter for the SMD RAM. We also have here some voltage regulators. This is uh, minus and plus 15 volt as well as 5 volts. Outside there is also another 5 volt with 3 amps regulator. So every voltage is here regulated with the linear regulators. We have here the transformer and here some, some capacitors and yes that's all. Um, what I want to say also is because the device is very old I will change all these capacitors. This is very important. Some of them look strange. So I will change first all the capacitors and then I change here the RAM. So I can take the four screws to disassemble here the board.
There are also two screws here on the right side, so I have to lose them. Here, as you can see, and here um, also um, you see this is a, G, a GPIB interface. And here we have another voltage regulator. Here's a power connector and the main switch. So I need to lose here these two screws. And I have to disconnect here the cables on both sides. And also here these ones. Okay, and now I can take here the printed circuit board. Okay, now let's do something here on the board. First I change the capacitor as, as I already mentioned, and then I change here the RAM. So the first six capacitors are changed. This is these are the six capacitor with thousand microfarad and at 40 volts. And now I change here these two. It's 100 micro 25 volts and 4.7 micro 63 volts. Now I changed every capacitor as you can see. And here another hint: if you want to do this work. Take care about the polarity for this uh, capacitors, and um, if there is no silk screen like here, take photos from from all sides um, in order to place the capacitor in the correct polarity. So now let's change here the RAM here this part, and in order to do this, I take my side cutter and cut all the pins like this. And then I can take it out here, this, uh, the part, and then I can disassemble all the pins. And now the other side. Now I desolder the pins using the plier. Now this is a view from the bottom side.
Now I have to clean here the pump and also the board. Now the pads are ready here for the socket. Now the socket is soldered here on the board and the uh, next step is to solder here the SMD RAM, as you can see it's uh, 6116 here on this adapter. The adapter is here from, uh, also, so both parts are from DigiKey and I took them because the adapter is ready to to install that means I only have to solder the um, the RAM here on the board and it has already some pins then in order to um, put it here into the into the socket so I have to solder now the RAM here to the board
okay, it looks okay. Now I put this here into the socket. I have to take care about pin 1. Pin 1 is here, pin 1 is also here. So this this direction. Okay. So let's put it back here first for the first test. Now everything is connected, now let's have a try. Now here is the result of the modification. Here's a RAM. Now I switch on the device and everything seems to be okay. Now I have to take some measurements in order to see if the, if the multimeter measures correctly. But I think it still works. Now I have connected here my power supply in order to check a little bit. So I set the voltage maybe to 5 volts and it shows 5 volts, 10 volts, everything 15 volts seems to be okay, 20 volts. 30 volts, 32, that's the maximum of my power supply, but it seems to work. This was an overview of my repairing here the digital multimeter UDS5. Thanks for watching and see you next time.